Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, this season, it's been all about the brake system. But at Garage Ed, we're going to talk about the master cylinder this time. That's the heart of the brake system. And master cylinder uses hydraulics to get the job done. So it makes sense to talk about hydraulics. Take a look at this graphic right here. Here's actually how it works. Let's say, for example, on the left there, we have a piston A. We're going to call that our master cylinder. We put 200 pounds of force into that master cylinder. And then over on the other side, piston B, well, we'll call that our caliper. And what we're going to do there is we're going to multiply the force because it's five square inches of surface area up to 500 pounds. That's how a master cylinder works. I love hydraulics, man. You can put 100 pounds here, string it 500 miles, push the pressure. You're going to get the same pressure on the other end. Pretty cool. I can actually demonstrate it right here. This is neat. So what's going on is I have a, let's say, for example, this is the master cylinder with a small chamber. And then we have a caliper here with a big old chamber. I got a 22 pound weight right here. I know it's hard to believe as easy as I curl it, but yes, it's a 22 pound weight. Here's the deal. I'm going to hold this really, really tight. And when I push on this, this is going to be our master cylinder. The brake fluid, which is in here, is going to travel through to a bigger surface area. And we're going to move this 22 pound weight. Here we go. There we go. Without that moving, we slid that across the table like it was nothing. Principle of hydraulics. How does it work? Well, like I said, got some small chambers in here. Our caliper has the big chambers. Now let's take a look inside the master cylinder. That's where all the magic happens. And inside of the master cylinder, you have two separate chambers. What's going on there? You even have a longitudinally split system, which means both front wheels are on one circuit and the both rear wheels are on one circuit or you can have a diagonally split system. That means that the front and the left rear, front, right, left, rear together, and the left front, right, rear are together on one channel. So there's two separate circuits. Why? If you have a failure, well, you still have half your brakes. That's a good thing. So inside of here, you can actually see right here, you have a primary piston and a secondary piston. And what's going on there is I'm putting fluid inside of these chambers. This is the low pressure side here and the low pressure side here. And when I push on it, this is the high pressure side and the high pressure side. I'm sending out high pressure to those chambers. Now inside of here, you actually have a primary piston, primary seal and a secondary piston, primary seal. So what's going on? That flares out, holds pressure and allows it to build pressure. On the other side, you have the secondary seal and the secondary seal. Now the primary piston, secondary seal, that's actually what's going to leak on the floor or leak inside the car if you have a leak or a leak between the booster. So that's a good idea to know that as well. Now our master cylinders, they come in different types. Pretty much used to this one right here. This is a non-integral master cylinder, which means the reservoir actually pops off with some grommets. You may just get a cylinder body and have to replace the reservoir itself. And then there's the old integral type, man, the big cast iron, that's pretty cool. But no matter what, if you get a master cylinder, you're gonna have to do some bench bleeding. And Dave, I think you got the answers for us. You got it. Well, bench bleeding is an important step once you get the brakes actually on the car. Now we know about bleeding the entire system and uh, that is a lot easier if you start by bench bleeding here at the master cylinder. What you're gonna do, you just throw it into a vise on your bench. Now this kit comes from rockauto.com and it comes with a couple of tubes and it comes with barb fittings. And all of these barb fittings, you have to check and see which one is gonna fit into your master cylinder. They'll have one that works for you. We've already done that here on the back with these barb fittings, just little nozzles, little adapters for the hoses for, for the kit here. And then you take your two hoses, actually you want to put brake fluid into the, into the reservoir first, and you take these two hoses and you, you put them in here. And this is where you take a screwdriver. You can use the pointy end or you can use the blunt end of it and you plunge in and out here and that will pump the fluid up through the, through the tubes here. And once you stop seeing bubbles, uh, that is when you are ready to go. And remember, the master cylinder is the headwater of your entire brake system. So everything else, all brakes at all four corners, that's all downstream from here. So if you can start by eliminating the bubbles at the top of the system, it's gonna make it a lot easier to bleed the system down at each of the four corners. Boy, especially with the anti-lock brakes and everything going on in there, and you saw all the nooks and crannies inside of that master cylinder. Well, John, that's a really great tech tip when it comes to the ever important master cylinder.